Hey, welcome back. Today, we're excited to showcase the new EG4 Chargeverter GC. This is a powerful and versatile 48 volt, 100 amp charger. We'll dive into its updated features and discuss why you would want to use a chargeverter in your system. Inside the box, you'll find an AC input cord pre-wired for 240 volt, 30 amp, with a NEMA L1430P four prong twist lock on one end and a quick connection on the other. Next, we have our battery cables with quick connections on one end and 5 16 ring terminals on the other, along with a variety of communication cables. The yellow cable is for your state of charge communication. The black cable is for your communication upgrades. And the cable with the three bare tinned wire pairs is for connecting the generator via dry contacts. It's crucial to keep these wire pairs together to ensure proper functionality. Additionally, we have the mounting brackets with screws, which are crucial for proper installation as this unit can get very hot. And finally, the charge verter itself. Everything you need for a smooth installation is included along with the manual. The EG4 Chargeverter GC is an innovative solution for those who rely on generators to power their solar systems or charge their batteries. This updated model features a sleek black design that complements the modern look of the latest EG4 systems. It's engineered to handle both 240 volt and 120 volt inputs and with the ability to swap out the plug according to the pinout guide in the manual, it offers exceptional versatility. The Chargeverter GC includes several important upgrades. First, the quick disconnects on both the AC and DC sides makes installation and maintenance a breeze. The new LCD screen is more user-friendly, providing clear and comprehensive information at a glance. One of the key features of the Chargeverter GC, where GC stands for Generator Communications, is its advanced state of charge control via generator dry contacts. This feature, absent in the older yellow version, allows the Chargeverter to automatically start and stop your generator, ensuring optimal battery levels without manual intervention. The state of charge control communicates with your EG4 batteries using RS-485 communication, enabling you to set charging parameters based on the battery state of charge, ensuring efficient and safe charging through the RJ11 port. So let's get this set up and see how it works. Mounting the charge verter is simple. Just attach the mounting plates to the unit and then to a fire safe backing. Before making any connections, Make sure all battery breakers are in the off position and all battery switches are in the off position. Connect the AC input by taking your AC cord and attaching it to the charge verter. Then plug the 240 volt or 120 volt if you've changed it to match your generator into the generator's power port. Next, connect the battery cables from the charge verter to your batteries and attach the communication cables as needed. Ensure that the RS-485 communication protocols on your batteries are configured for EG4 and verify that your dip switches are correctly set. Check your manual for the correct configuration for your specific batteries. For server rack batteries, you'll connect the charge verter using the provided battery cables with the 5 16 ring terminals and connect them to the bus bars inside the server rack. For the PowerPro batteries, you'll need to use a common external bus bar. Connect the battery cables from the PowerPro batteries, which have quick connect ends for the battery side, to the bus bar. You may need to apply lugs to the other end of these cables to connect them to the bus bar. If you need assistance with this, check out our Solar DIY Preparing Battery Cables for Solar Installation video for a detailed guide. Now that everything is connected, we can go ahead and flip the breakers on our batteries and turn our batteries back on. We can also go ahead and flip the breaker on the charge verter to see if we are communicating. If we're communicating, we should be able to see the state of charge percent of the batteries. If not, state of charge percent will read lost. Ours currently says 77%, so we're good to go. To set up the state of charge control, we'll navigate the LCD menu. We'll press enter to get into our settings menu. First, we need to adjust the stop SOC to 79%. This has to be higher than our start 
SOC, so we must set this first. Next, we can set the start SOC. In our system, the start SOC number is crucial. It indicates the specific SOC percent at which when the battery level drops below this threshold, the charge verter will be triggered to start charging the batteries. So we will set the start SOC percent to just above where it is now, 78%. Now, when the battery reaches just below this level, the charge verter will automatically start the generator. If battery communications are not being used, you can also set voltage thresholds to tell the generator when to start and stop. As you can see, the generator just kicked on and the charge verter is now drawing power to charge the batteries. We can see the amperage is slowly increasing. This automated process is perfect for maintaining your system's efficiency and reliability. Now, it should also automatically kick off when it reaches its stop SOC percent which we set to be 79%. There have been questions about whether you can use the charge verter to charge your batteries while simultaneously powering your loads. EG4 has conducted extensive testing and confirmed that you can charge the batteries with the charge verter while using them to power your loads. However, ensure that your loads do not exceed the output capacity of the charge verter as any excess load will prevent the input from charging the batteries and will be directed solely to powering your loads. So, why would you want to use a charge verter in your solar system? While the EG4 18K PV, 6000 XP, and now the 12K PV, as well as other inverters on the market, have dedicated generator inputs that can be adjusted to automatically start and stop charging based on SOC percent or voltage settings, there are a few inherent issues with this solution. To power your loads and charge your batteries, considering that a generator can only run a pure sine wave at 60% of its capacity, you would need a very large generator to truly back up a home. This means a 10 kilowatt generator will only provide a clean six kilowatts of power. Otherwise, the power will be dirty. Dirty power can damage your equipment or cause it to degrade faster. For example, if you need 12 kilowatts of power to back up your home, you would need a 20 kilowatt generator, which would be very expensive. However, it's important to note that 60% is a general rule of thumb, and some generators, particularly inverter generators, have a higher output with less than 3% total harmonic distortion. When using a generator, having one with less than 3% THD is crucial to ensure clean power and protect your equipment. This is where the charge verter becomes essential. It allows you to use a smaller, less expensive generator by efficiently converting any sine wave into safe DC power to charge your batteries, even when the generator's power quality is less than ideal. This capability not only saves you money on a larger generator, but also protects your inverter and other sensitive equipment from potential damage caused by dirty power. Consider these two big advantages. First, it's more efficient, meaning you don't have to run the generator continuously just until all the batteries are charged. The other is that you get clean power from your inverter all the time, regardless of what generator you're running. If you're using a cheap generator for emergency battery charging, its voltage, frequency, and sine wave quality can be inconsistent, especially with varying loads. You don't want to send that through your inverter as it could potentially cause damage. The charge verter efficiently and cleanly manages this by charging your batteries directly, protecting your system from poor quality power. If you are only charging from the grid, this isn't typically an issue. However, when the grid is down, having the charge verter ensures you're prepared for reliable emergency charging. Additionally, if you're limited to a single leg of 120 volt from the grid, like a 30 amp service at an RV park, the charge verter can be used to charge the battery effectively while the 30 amp service powers your loads. Here's a summary of a few key reasons why you might want to consider a charge verter for your system. Number one, efficient charging. The charge verter can handle high charge rates, reducing the time needed to recharge your batteries. This is especially useful if you rely on a generator as a backup power source. Number two, generator compatibility. 
it eliminates many issues associated with directly connecting a generator to an inverter. The charge verter is designed to work seamlessly with generator power, ensuring stable and reliable operation. Number three, automatic generator control. With generator dry contacts, the charge verter can automatically start and stop your generator based on battery levels. This ensures your batteries are always at optimal charge without manual monitoring. Number four, flexibility. Whether you have a 240 volt or 120 volt power source, the charge verter adapts to your needs, making it a versatile addition to any solar setup. Number five, protection from dirty power. It safeguards your system against poor quality sine waves often produced by lower budget generators, ensuring stable operation and extending the lifespan of your components. Number six, adjustable charge parameters. You can customize the charge current from zero to 100 amps and voltage, 43 to 57 volts DC, ensuring optimal charging conditions for your specific battery setup. Number seven, versatility with different generators. The charge verter is designed to work with small portable and gasoline generators, making it a budget-friendly solution compared to needing a large, expensive generator. Number eight, alternative power sources. You can also connect the charge verter to the grid via an EV charger outlet or even to an EV truck. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, you can swap out the plug for 120 volt generator outlets, offering multiple ways to keep your system charged. Be sure to check the manual for the correct pinout setup to meet your specific needs. The EG4 Charge Verter GC is a versatile and powerful tool for anyone relying on generator power. Its updated features, easy installation, and automatic generator control make it a top choice for solar setups. When designing your system, prioritize communication between your inverter and battery. This is significantly more important than using the state of charge on your charge verter. Also, remember to ensure that your inverter's loads do not exceed the output capacity of your charge verter. If the loads are too high, the charge verter will prioritize powering the loads over charging the batteries. To achieve efficient battery charging, keep your loads within the charge verter's output limits. I hope this video has been helpful in helping you to understand the charge verter and how to set it up. If you need more detailed instructions, check out the manual linked in the description below. If you have any questions or if you enjoy the video, please leave a comment. We'd also love to hear how you're using or plan to use your charge verter GC. Share your experiences in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. For more products, installations, tips, tricks, and insights into your solar journey, don't forget to subscribe so you'll get all the latest information. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, where we believe that solar is for everyone. See you next time.